So we're going to call this uh, phenomena related to refraction. In other words, we're going to look at some of the interesting ways that refraction shows up in our daily lives. This bending of light. Refraction. So, um, remember, the key is that if light goes from one substance to another, it can bend, right? And it doesn't even have to be a different substance. What's tricky is it could be a substance that's not consistent. So, for instance, uh, one of the things that can refract light is air. And so air, if you think about air, here's the ground. When sunlight uh, shines down on the ground, it warms up the ground, which means the air down at the bottom is warmer than the air higher up. And warm air is less dense than cold air. It has different properties. So if I just draw little dots to show the air molecules, the air here is warming up, so it's less dense, and the air above is more dense. So even though we can't see this with our eyes, light can sense it. So when light comes through here, right, it comes in, it changes from more dense to a less dense medium, and it can bend. And the interesting thing is, is that it's not like there's a magic line right here. The truth is, is that the it's a gradual sort of getting more dense as you go. So instead of a, a very sharp line, it's a gradual change in the density, which means instead of seeing the light go in and bend like we saw in our pictures of refraction, instead the gradual change makes the light bend gradually and sort of curve as it goes through the changing air. So light rays can curve as they go through air of different temperatures. And this can cause weird things to happen. So, for instance, here's a good example of this. You may have seen or had this situation where you're sitting in your car right here. <laughs> Here's your car. And you are driving along the highway. And way up ahead, you see a, a little, what looks like a puddle of water. Right? You ever see that on the pavement? It has to be a sunny day, usually. You see this puddle of water up here, and you're like, what's going on there? Well, and the funny thing is, is you can never catch it, right? You keep driving, and the puddle just keeps moving. And you're like, what? what is that? Well, it's your brain trying to make sense of refraction, playing a trick on it. The light from the sky is shining down on the road here like this. But as it comes towards the road, because the air changes in density, right? The air is more dense up above because it's cooler. And as you go down, it gets warmer and warm air has, is less dense. What we're doing is we're changing from more to less dense, which means you bend away from the normal. So if you were to just draw a, a line here to show the, the boundary, then what you would do is you would bend, here's the normal, the light ray would sort of bend more towards the normal like this. But because it's a gradual change, it doesn't just bend once, it keeps bending a little bit at a time and it makes a curve. And so what happens is the light comes down, oops, let me erase that line, let me erase that better. The light comes down and it starts to bend, it starts to bend, it starts to bend, it starts to bend. And then when it gets down here, it's bending like this, but now it stops bending because it's pretty much in the lower layer. So it's not, it's not bending very much because it's not rising very fast. But look where the light goes. It goes right here to your eyeball in the car. And so your eyeball is seeing light from the sky that hasn't actually even hit the road. It's bent because of the changing density of the air towards your eye. But remember, our brains are not very good at figuring out the bending of light. So our eyeballs always tell our brains that the light came in a straight line, right? So what this looks like to our eye is that the light came from somewhere down here on the road. 
And so our brain says, why is skylight coming from the road? It doesn't make sense. And it creates an image of the sky on the road. Remember when we did our mirrors, we saw how like mirror land is images, right? Those are illusions. They're not real things. This creates an image of the sky on the road that our, our brain thinks is coming from there because it doesn't understand the bend. But then our brain thinks the sky can't be on the road. That's weird. So our brain flips through our Rolodex of memories. And it says, well, what could that be? What looks a lot like blue sky on the road? Water does. And so our brain says, oh, there's a puddle up there. And it tells us there's a puddle when there isn't any puddle at all. Because it's water is the closest thing our brain can come up with to explain this weird idea of skylight coming from the road. So you see, that's called a mirage. When, when, when bending light makes us see th something that isn't really there, because it's an illusion of bending light, we call it a mirage. And this can happen in many places. It can happen over the ocean. You know, you hear stories of the of uh, of a person swimming in the ocean, right? So they're they're swimming along here. They're lost in the ocean. They they fell out of a boat. I don't know what happened to the poor guy. They're getting tired, and they look over here and they see what looks like an island in the distance. It's sort of this big lumpy gray sort of thing, and it's right here. Right? It looks like maybe there's an island there. It's kind of foggy, but it's not an island at all. What it is, is it's a mirage caused by perhaps a funny shaped cloud. Uh, whoops, maybe I better draw this in a different way. Let me erase a little bit of this and go over here. It's caused by a funny shaped cloud up in the sky. And the light from the cloud and the sky is moving down towards the ocean. But as it gets closer, it warm, the air is warming a bit, changes in density, and that light bends as it comes down here, and it bends like this towards the eyeball of the person. And the person looks, and it looks like somewhere straight back. Remember, our eyes think light comes in a straight line. There's this lumpy gray thing here. And the brain says, well, that must be an island. What, el what else is the lumpy gray thing on the water, right? And the person is swimming, oh, the island, the island. But just like in the car, right, the reason that you can't catch up to it is because if, you, if he swims over here, well, now he's not seeing the light from that cloud. He's seeing, uh, my picture is too far. There's another cloud way over here. And now he's, because the light is following the same sort of bend. And now he's seeing the light from a more distant cloud, which causes him to think that the, the island is over here. And it just keeps moving out of his out of his range, and people have been fooled by this, and they swam towards a spot they thought was an island, and the island just keeps moving because it's not an island; it's an illusion, and of course it ends badly. There's no land there, so this kind of mirage is quite common. When we see things in the distance, what we're really seeing is reflections of what's up in the sky that are appear to be coming from the surface because our eyes don't get the fact that the light has bent refraction of the light. Another interesting thing to do, um, and if you're a kid who's ever played in the water, maybe you've gone to the beach and in the water you see a little minnow and you want to grab the minnow out of the water. Well, besides the fact that minnows are very fast, we always seem to miss. Eh? We always seem to miss when you're reaching the water. In fact, even if you go, you drop your, you know, something in the water, you drop a quarter in the pool, you reach down to grab it, and it's like, oh, you move your hand a bit because it's not where you thought it was, right? Strange. So let's talk about what happens there. Let's draw some water, right? Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'll just draw it in blue. I won't make waves because it just there's some water. Now let's say there's a man standing here on the ground, and he's got a spear. Maybe he's going to try to spear the fish, right? He's going to fish his, you know, on the island, a little little spear with three pokes on it, catch some supper. So down in the water, there's a fish. I'll draw the fish uh, in purple. There's a nice little fish right here. Mm -hmm, there he is. Now, in order for the man to see the fish, light has to bounce off the fish 
and go to the man's eye. So let's say some light is bouncing off the fish and it's going to the man's eye. Well, watch what happens. Light that goes up this way from the fish goes up here and hits the boundary between the water and the air. Water, air. Remember, N for water is 1.33, N for air is 1. That's more dense to less dense. That means that the light will bend towards the normal. Oh, sorry, no, the light will bend away from the normal. My mistake. So the light will bend away from the normal, and it will bend up like this to the person's eyeball. That's what's happening to the light that's bouncing off of the fish and heading towards Mr. Fisherman. But Mr. Fisherman's brain interprets that to mean that that light must have come in a straight line from over here. So guess where he thinks the fish is? He thinks the fish is here. So he aims his spear for this spot and he misses the fish because the fish isn't actually there. It's an illusion caused by the bending of light. That's why our, our brains have such a hard time looking, trying to grab something underwater. Unless we stick our whole head underwater so the light is not leaving the water, then it's going to go in a straight line. That's easier. But when it's passing from water to air, we get this weird problem. Things in the water don't actually appear to be where they actually are. So this is an interesting thing. If you ever want to catch a fish in the water, you can see from the picture, don't aim right at the fish. Aim sort of a little bit below it, a little bit below it, and you'll probably hit it. And people who spear fish like this all the time, they kind of, they kind of figure this out by trial and error, and they know, they know how to do that. So that's another interesting little thing that happens when light uh, can be bent. So we call these little tricks of light uh, mirages. Okay, the appearance of mountains and strange things on the water or puddles on the the, the uh, pavement, um, and this this works really well on pavement because pavement is black and it, it heats up the air fast, lots of heat, so it makes a very strong difference in the air being very low density versus high. It it makes the gradient of density bigger which bends the air more, more effectively. You, and that allows it to bend enough to make this little thing happen. So the same idea. So things don't have to be where they are. So these are called mirages or sort of tricks. We also see other strange mirages caused by, by the bending of light because air has different, different properties. Some of you may, if you've ever noticed some days it's kind of most people don't look up into the sky anymore because they don't care they're too busy looking down at their phones right but in the old days people like me we didn't have phones and things and so when we went outside sometimes we looked up because it was kind of interesting and sometimes we noticed the sun would shine here and there's a weird phenomenon that happens where on certain days when the conditions are just right you get a sort of a shiny spot over here and another shiny spot right over here, the same distance away. These are called sun dogs. That's what they named them way back. But what they are, are illusions of the sun being in different places, again, because of the refraction and bending of light as it moves through our atmosphere, which is variable. The atmosphere is not the same density, so it can refract and bend light and it can give us some pretty strange, weird effects. Um, if you've ever seen sun dogs, it's pretty neat. Right? The other very common, common example of the bending of light is, of course, the rainbow. And that's because, I'll explain the rainbow, it's a little bit different. You'll remember our talking about white light being composed of many colors, right? The colors of the, the red, green, and blue light. And so if I just do red, green, and blue, right? What we have is a, a, a ray of white light actually looks like this. And so what can sometimes happen, so you have to understand this is all blended together. So maybe what I should do is redraw that. Now that we know it's red, green, and blue all mixed, I'm just going to draw it as a black sort of line of, of, of white light. It's hard to do white on a white board, right? When it hits a raindrop, a raindrop 
can bend light because, of course, it's moving through a different substance. But here's the cool thing. You remember that red light is a, a, a longer wave and blue light is a shorter wave. And what's interesting is short waves will bend more than long waves. And so what will happen is uh, the blue light will bend a little bit more than the red light. So instead of being all together when they bend, the blue will bend a little more and the red will bend a little less and it will separate the colors. And then we see, of course, the rainbow, the red, orange, yellow, all the colors being separated, green, blue, violet, because they don't all bend exactly the same amount. Different colors bend more than other colors. So that's what causes a white light to spread out into all the different colors, because some colors bend a lot and some only bend a little bit. So we get this rainbow effect. It usually happens when we see light passing through raindrops or fog or moisture in the air, but it can also happen if you have a chandelier at home with little crystally things on it. Sometimes you look on the wall when the sun shines in and you'll see little rainbows, right? Uh, the colors that we see in crystals and things like crystals or even diamonds when they sparkle, all those colors are because of refraction. It's because the, the uh, material is a different medium than the air and it bends the light, but it bends different colors more. So that's an interesting effect too, rainbow effects, all because of the bending and refracting of light. And that's all we're going to say about that, just kind of interesting stuff that happens. And yet if you really understand refraction, you can play tricks on people, right? You can learn how to, how to fool them by bending light.